95% of chess players blunder a piece within the first 20 moves of every game they play is a statistic I just made up, but considering you clicked on this video, it's probably not far from the truth. We're all too familiar with horrendous blunders losing us games, but why do we blunder and more importantly, how can we stop? Allow me to blow your mind. Look at this board. It's currently moved 20 and nothing has been traded off. I want you to quickly evaluate what you see on this board. Pawn structures, checks, captures, attacks, whatever you feel is noteworthy in this position. Pause the video if you feel you need more time. Here is the A3 pawn, and here it isn't. The entire board is now gone. Now, I'm gonna ask you one question. How does the knight move? Black has a knight on a light square and a knight on a dark square. What square is the dark squared knight on? Bonus points if you can tell me which squares it can move to. If you said the knight was on the F6 square, you would be right, and you would have excellent conceptualization skills. If you couldn't remember where the knight was, you might have come to a realization. That realization is that you rely 100% on your sight to play chess. There is no magic board inside of your head to help you with the moves. When your eyes close, the game stops. You might have seen this viral clip of Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura taking the human benchmark test. It's a test designed for chimps to display their incredible conceptualization and memory skills. If a chimp was able to get a certain score, it would be rewarded with walnuts. The human benchmark test works by revealing a set of numbers in a random order, and telling the participant to memorize the order of disorganized numbers. The test will then remove the numbers, reducing them to identical squares. The participant is then instructed to click on the squares in ascending order of where the numbers used to be. Over 90% of the time, the chimps were able to outperform adult humans I'm in this chimp. test. I'm a chimp, bro. I'm literally a chimp. They would usually be able to complete the test up to nine digits, but they couldn't beat Hikaru. Hikaru joined the 100th percentile of the human benchmark test by memorizing a record 30 digits. He did this by assigning the numbers to the squares on a chessboard, like it was a certain opening he needed to memorize with notation. A3 to G2, A3 to G3, A3 to G3, A3 to G3, A3 to G3, This is called conceptualization, and it's why Hikaru doesn't blunder. If you couldn't figure out where the knight was in this exercise, you probably play chess through visualization. Visualization is solving chess problems by looking at the pieces on the board, recognizing patterns, and making moves according to where the pieces are visually in relation to one another. The issue with playing like this is that your eyes can't look everywhere at once. There are 64 squares on a chessboard, and when every move changes the position slightly, your eyes sometimes simply miss things. You already knew this, but how do more advanced players play so consistently without making such mistakes? They use something called conceptualization, and it's how chess masters are able to play games blindfolded. Of course, I'm not suggesting conceptualization alone is better than visualization. If that were the case, all top grandmasters would just play blindfolded. But when you combine visualization with conceptualization, you get an unstoppable force. If you're still a little confused as to why we're doing this, let me explain. Think of conceptualization and visualization as two friends cooking dinner for a group of five people. Let's call conceptualization Danny and visualization Levy. Danny is blind. He cannot see what he is cooking. However, it is Danny that knows all the recipes, knows all the techniques of cooking, and has culinary experience. Levy, on the other hand, can see completely fine. However, Levy is an imbecile. He has no idea how to cook. They are able to cook because they work together. Levy will tell Danny what he sees in front of him, the food he sees, the utensils he sees, and the appliances he sees. With that information, Danny will expertly tell Levy exactly what to do, and exactly how to cook the meal for the group of five people. However, sometimes, because Levy is so stupid, he mistakenly thought a carrot was an onion. He also started mistaking spoons for knives, and the cooking process was imperfect to say the least. This is a problem that can be solved two ways. 
either Levy can stop being so stupid, or Danny can stop being so blind. Luckily for Levy, Danny was approached with a method to fix his blindness. He needs to subscribe and recommend his friends to Jack Sarkeesian's YouTube channel. Every week he successfully does this, his eyesight will increase by 5% with a maximum of 50% of his eyesight able to be restored. Danny does this every week until he has 50% of his eyesight back. Although his eyesight is not perfect, he can now work much more harmoniously with Levy. If Levy reaches for a carrot thinking it's an onion, Danny can now intervene and correct Levy. With Danny and Levy both being able to see the food they're cooking, they work much more effectively. Whilst Levy still has 50% more sight than Danny does, Danny's ability to connect sight with culinary expertise is a major improvement on their efficiency. So let's put this into chess terms and use a combination of visualization and conceptualization. This is a position I played last week. Black is up a single pawn, but white has a dangerous passed pawn which somewhat compensates for being down a pawn. There are four rooks and two knights on the board, and both kings are very active. You might be wondering, what is there to conceptualize? Well, in this position, pay close attention to the knights. There are currently no working tactics, however, there are some things to make mental notes of. The first thing to note is that white's past b-pawn is pinned to the rook which is on the other side guarding it. And the second thing to note is that black has this potential forking square, on C4. These two facts are things that we have established through visualization. We have seen them on the board, now let's conceptualize them. If white plays knight d4, we could play rook takes d4, and if king takes, we can play knight c6 check. This forces the white pawn to capture, and we can take the rook on the other side. After the check, we will go king d6, and we have simplified this position. White will win our pawn, but we will win the passed pawn, and we can control this king with our rook. Alternatively, if white plays something like knight f4, we can actually play rook e4 check. This forces king d2, and now we get this forking square with knight c4 check. In this game, white did play knight d4, and after rook takes, king takes, knight c6 check, pawn takes, rook takes, rook check, we went king d6, Rook takes, king takes, king here, and check. And this is a simply winning endgame. Now, you might be wondering, isn't this just calculation? The answer is yes. The combination of visualization and conceptualization is just calculation. The reason you keep blundering your pieces is not because you can't conceptualize your games, it's because your conceptualization solely relies on your visualization. If your visualization fails, so does your conceptualization, because it is dependent on the pieces you can see. So, how do we fix this? Don't Move Until You See It is a completely free website that enables you to train your conceptualization skills absolutely free of charge. They even have a free 5-day course. If you'd like to check it out yourself, I've left a link in the description. I recently had Aiden, the founder of Don't Move Until You See It, on one of my streams to help me learn about it. This is the introductory exercise he gave me. Close your eyes. Yes, I mean it, close your eyes. Keep them closed until the end of the exercise. Picture the entire board in your head. You are playing with the white pieces. The game is about to start. Remember these moves in your head and the position it creates on the board without using your eyes. Remember you are playing with the white pieces. Move one. White plays e4. Black responds with e5. Move two, white plays knight c3. Black responds with knight c6. e4, e5, knight c3, knight c6. Move three, white plays bishop c4. Black responds with bishop c5. e4, e5, Knight c3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5. On the fourth move, white plays queen g4. Black responds with d6. e4, e5, knight c3, knight c6, queen g4, d6. Remember to keep your eyes closed. 
but on move 4, in response to queen g4, black played d6. What does d6 do? I'll give you 5 seconds to evaluate. If you answered it reveals a discovered attack on white's queen, you'd be correct. Black's bishop on c8 now attacks white's queen on g4. Now, what is white's best move in this position? Black has just played d6, so what does white play? Again, I'll give you 5 seconds to find the answer. If you answered queen takes g7, you'd be correct. Taking the free pawn on the g7 square is white's best move. In response to queen takes g7, black plays knight f6. What is the best move for white here? Again, I'll give you 5 seconds to find the answer. If you answered queen takes h8, you would be wrong. Whilst there is a free rook on the h8 square, you missed queen takes f7 checkmate. I'm 2000 elo in both blitz and rapid, and when I first did this exercise it took me 10 whole minutes to get my bearings. Not only did I want to play queen takes h8 at the end as well, but it just took me a very very long time, much longer than it should take me, considering it is only a sequence of 6 moves. If you didn't complete the exercise, that's completely normal. Here's how you can get better at it. This is Don't Move's Blindfold Trainer. In short, it allows you to Knight undertake F the same exercise six. we just did, but you don't need me to tell you the moves. You can choose to play as D white or black, and five. by inputting move notations corresponding to the moves you'd like to play, you will hear a voice telling you the moves the engine has decided to respond with. If you get stuck at any time, you can click the light bulb button. This will show you the current position and how well you did. If you want to continue after seeing this position, just click the light bulb again. If you're struggling with the notations and only knowing how pieces move by muscle memory, I highly recommend using chess.com's notations trainer. Through this trainer, a specific square notation will pop up on your screen and all you need to do is click where that square is on the board. You get 30 seconds to complete each round. Doing this for even 30 minutes in one session, or 10 minutes over a few sessions, will incredibly increase your notation skills. Now, I could sit here and tell you more, but I'm a firm believer of hands-on practice. Don't move until you see it is completely free. You can even get a completely free course on conceptualization with the link I've put in the description. I highly encourage you to train your conceptualization skills through this website. It's such an underrated skill to learn, and it being a weakness is exactly why you keep blundering your pieces.